Question 11 of the 2018 Higher Physics Examination Section 2. A student constructs a battery using a potato, a strip of copper and a strip of magnesium. The student then sets up the following circuits with the potato battery connected to a variable resistor R in order that the electromotive force EMF and the internal resistance of the battery may be determined. And there's a circuit there. So for one mark you're asked to state what is meant by the term electromotive force, the EMF. And you have to remember this very famous paragraph. The electromotive force is the amount of electrical potential energy supplied to each coulomb of charge as it passes through the source. So if you have an EMF, say, of 6 volts, then what that really means is for each coulomb of charge that passes through that source, they'll gain 6 joules of energy. So that'll be a signal volt is 6 joules per coulomb. So all you have to say is remember that statement, the electromotive force is the amount of electrical potential energy measured in joules supplied to each coulomb of charge as it passes through the source. Question 11b. The student uses readings of current I and terminal potential difference V from the circuit to produce the graph shown. And we have to determine the internal resistance of the potato battery from that graph. Look at the graph. Check out the scales of the graph. Along the x-axis we have current, which is measured in microamps. In the y-axis we have voltage, which is measured in millivolts. So be careful about that. Millivolts is 1 times 10 to minus 3 of a volt. Microamps is 1 times 10 to minus 6 of an amp. Now let's concentrate on the theory behind that graph. Now we know that if we increase the current from the, the potato cell, the terminal potential difference is dropping down. Now we know that comes from the equation that the terminal potential difference V is equal to the EMF take away the current multiplied by R. That's one of the basic equations you know about internal resistance. So how do we get a straight line equation out of that? Well, a little bit of moving about, we are going to have V here, and I'm going to just swap these two around to give us minus IR plus E. Just swap around the two terms. I'm going to do one other little thing here. I'm going to put down V is equal to, and this minus IR term, I'm going to write it as minus RI. I'm just going to swap that around, plus E. Now you might be thinking, why am I doing that? And the reason why I'm doing that is to get that top equation here into the form of y equals mx plus c. So y equals mx plus c. And you can see that the y axis is volts, which is correct, and the x axis is current i, which is correct. So that, equa that line there has equation v equals minus r i plus e, and e is the place where it cuts when the current is zero, that's the EMF. So all I have to do now then is find the gradient of that graph. If I find the gradient of it, it will be equal to minus the value of the internal resistance. So to do that, I have to select two well-spaced points, and I've done that on the graph. I've selected one up here, which crosses a line A, and the coordinates of point A are found out to be 20 microamps, 600. So I can put that in like that, 20 microamps and 600 millivolts. I've selected point B down here to be on the lines 130 and 200 millivolts. So point B is going to be 130 microamps and it's going to be 200 millivolts. So there's my two points, carefully selected because they cross the lines, and now I've got to work out the gradient. And we know from our maths classes that the gradient is equal to the change in the y-axis, change in the y-coordinates, sorry, divided by the change in the x-coordinates. And we have to be very careful of the order we do that. So let's work out the change in the y-coordinates starting from point A. So point A would be, to point B, the change would be 200 take away 600. So 200 microvolts would be the change going from A to B. 200 take away 600. 
I'm keeping in the units to remember myself that it's millivolts I'm dealing with, divided by the change in the X coordinates. So if I've gone from 200, take away 600, I must go from 130, take away 20. So that'll be 130 microamps, take away 20 microamps. So my gradient then is equal to 200 minus 600 is f minus 400. That ties in with the mass. It's millivolts. I've got to say times 10 to the minus 3 of a volt. And I've got to divide that by 130, take away 20, is 110 microamps. So it's times 10 to the minus 6 of an amp. Now if I do that in my calculator, I end up with the gradient equal to minus 366 three, ohms in my calculator. So I can say that the internal resistance then will be equal to the value of that internal resistance of this potato cell is going to be equal to about 3600 ohms to two significant figures. Question 11c. The student connects a red LED and a blue LED in turn to the battery. The LEDs are forward biased when connected. The student observes that the battery will operate the red LED but not the blue LED. The diagram represents the band structure of the blue LED. Now LEDs emit light when electrons fall from the conduction band into the valence band of the p-type semiconductor. Explain using band theory why the blue LED will not operate this battery. Well, first of all, let's take a look at the red LED. But it looks a complicated diagram, but it's not that hard to understand. Here, these are the energy levels here in the n-type semiconductor. And we have got electrons in the conduction band. But to get them into the conduction band of the p-type, they have to have enough energy to climb this potential hill here. See that little energy difference there? Well, the battery supplies the energy to lift these electrons into that level of the p-type semiconductor so that when they fall down they will give off energy in the form of red light. Now in the case of the blue LED the electrons are in the band here, they're in this level, the conduction band, but the battery does not provide enough energy for them to surmount this little potential barrier to get over to the p-type material. It's as simple as that. So from band theory, the electrons are in the conduction band here. In order to move over to the p-type material, they must surmount or conquer this little potential difference barrier here, which is a small difference in energy level. So they must have enough energy to get over that barrier there. And in the case of the blue LED, the battery does not supply enough energy for that to happen. So there's the answer there written out. The battery does not supply enough energy to the electrons in the, the n-type semiconductor of the blue LED to cross the potential difference barrier at the junction.